Hey, howdy, hi, how's it going? My name is Mason, and you are back with the uh, Writer's Block once more. Uh, Jonah was unprepared for that particular intro. He is joining us tonight along with Erica and Cameron and Jeff as well. Uh, we hope this video finds you well, no matter what time of day or night you're watching it. Um, but speaking of which, we are talking today about productivity. Um, as anyone that spent any amount of time following a writer on Twitter knows, uh, <laughs> authors are infamously horrendous at being productive, right? Um, write a paragraph, get up, go get a drink, sit down, write another paragraph, get up, go get a drink, repeat that for a half, half an hour until you really need to use the bathroom, use the bathroom for however long, repeat the cycle. Wait, you right? get whole paragraphs done before you take breaks? <laughs> Look at this fancy dude over here. It was like a sentence. What can I say? Maybe. <laughs> what can I say? I'm master at work over here. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about, uh, I would say probably the tricks that we have found that help, uh, if any. Um, we haven't found any tricks. What helps us get stuff done? Because all of us have finished stuff, right? The five of us here um and finally the the stuff that maybe is a little bit hard for us um but to begin um jonah what is like a trick or or uh you know what just gets you going what helps you write well the really awkward answer to that question for me is that, A, I haven't done any writing in months because I'm focusing on my last semester before graduation. But even before that, I am so far down the discovery writing spectrum that my sense of productivity is about as ambiguous as you can get. Like I will go weeks or months at a time without writing and then sit down nearing November during National Novel Writing Month and pound out a third of my book in nearly one sitting. And yet all of that will feel productive because the way my writing process works is that I don't just count my writing as productive. I count all of the just idle thought processes, processes I have that make the book better. Like if I'm consuming a piece of media that I will then adapt and take a piece out of and stick into the book, that's still productive to me. So it's as much about watching and listening to other things that you can then use as it is about actually putting things down on the page for me. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Erica, you have so thoughts. I, as metrics for being productive are very mechanical. I started writing when I was a teenager and I had the type of, type of parents who didn't think kids should have access to the internet. So I wrote my first five books or at least the first four, if I remember, on a laptop that did not have Wi-Fi. So I had no option to be distracted by the internet. I could go downstairs and connect to it if I wanted to, but when I was upstairs in MySpace, there wasn't a lot of options for being distracted and the internet is the chief demon when people are being distracted. So I found if I just shut off the Wi-Fi, then I'm back to my 15 year old self and I can do that again. And then two other more mechanical tricks I use are, I have my battery saver enabled, enabled at 30%. So when the screen gets dimmer, I know Okay, I only have so long before I can write before this runs out. So I'm going to make all those minutes count. And sometimes I purposely start my laptop. So I know, okay, I'm lazy, but I want to be productive for the rest of the 15% of the battery life I have. And then I can go get a charger that will be my break and I can go do something else while I'm doing that and, and it's charging. And another trick that, I've, that I found that was useful that I don't have in my current laptop is I had the screensaver enabled at 60 seconds. So if I ever spent 60 seconds just staring at the screen, then all the little swirlies would pop up. And if I really needed to just look at the screen for a while, then I would just press the space bar. So it didn't really Im impede me with what I was doing, but I found making my computer punish me is a, is a great way to make sure I'm not punishing me. I, I do have to break in here and say that we should probably be listening to Erica more than anybody else. She is the one who always has a submission for our writing group every week and just doesn't miss. So listen to her. <laughs> for reals. Jeff and Cameron, anything to contribute? 
I, I find a gamification to be pretty useful. Uh, finding external trackers and rewards to uh, give myself has been historically how I've been most uh, consistent. I love National Novel Writing Month because it gives me not only some external structure, but also a community to interact with that really helps and really sort of motivates me. That being said, I don't want to dis I don't want to detract too much from the the um, the productivity conversation here by saying that I, I tend to work in fits and starts. Um, and the older I get, the more okay I am with that. Uh, so I have not been super productive lately, as I've been trying to edit two different novels at once, and I'm really feeling the lack of any new storytelling that I'm doing, and it's really been bugging me, but it's what needs to get done, and I take it at the speed that I take it, knowing that sometimes I'm really just going to blaze through it, like Jonah was talking about, and other times are going to be more fallow periods where I'm storing up energy and... Um, garnering ideas and working things over in my mind and that may not translate into words on the page but you got to live your life too uh, other than just writing your novels yeah i feel like there's so many potential things we could talk about i know they say that about a lot of subjects but <laughs> productivity when you're trying to be a writer you end up i think experimenting with a lot of different things have you know the highs have the lows as has been described already in terms of i'm getting a lot done and here's another time where i'm not um, a couple quick tips, I'll try to keep them quick, uh, things that work for me. Um, one, with my job, just due to the nature of it, I have to track my hours uh, because I do work from home. And so I, I try to do that too with writing. And I find that when I'm tracking my hours with writing, um, I am more productive. It can be tricky to know like what all counts as, as writing, kind of like Jonah talked about as well. Um, but sometimes I'll separate it out and everything. Obviously you wanna be careful about you're spending more time tracking your hours than actually doing the work. So that's no good, um, but it is pretty nice to be able to look back at a week and say like, I wrote five hours or I wrote 10 hours or I wrote 15 hours. And then really looking at that week and seeing what was the difference? Like why was I able to write 15 hours one week? Why did I only write five hours that other week? How can I make more weeks like a 15 hour week or something for instance? Um, so that tracking hours has worked for me. I haven't done it recently. And I, I, I think I need to get back to it. Part of me is, started transition to like like measuring chapters or words. I know a lot of people measure words, um, but I, I, at least in the beginning of getting into a rhythm, I think hours are something you can control a bit more because you don't necessarily know how many words you're gonna write in an hour. Um, some other quick things, kind of like uh, Eric was talking about is turning stuff off. Uh, I love deeply gaming. And so I will delete games from like my computer or my phone. Um, so I have to like actually actively reinstall them before I could play them. So, you know, during the week or a time when I'm supposed to be getting writing done, I will like delete everything on my computer and then reinstall it over the weekend. Uh, that type of idea uh, I have found helpful, especially because uh, I'm the type of gamer and I think most people are that or with anything that when I'm not doing it, I'm still thinking about it if it's something that's actively like part of my life. So once I get a day or two away from the gaming, and then I'm writing more consistently, then my sort of base thoughts when I'm like brushing my teeth or something are thinking about the novel as opposed to thinking about like a deck combination or a, a character pick in a video game. And so I think that that writing when you're not writing is very important. I think a lot of good ideas come up from that. I think you gotta free some brain space to make that happen. So whatever your, I'm gonna say addiction for me for video games, whatever your addiction might be, you know, pushing that to the side during certain days so then your brain is free to kind of spin things out from your writing can be surprising what you come up with. Talking about disconnecting from the internet, there are a couple of tools that I've come across that have been pretty useful. Of course, there are uh, ones, there, there are programs that will lock down your browser so that you can set a time period where you can just not look things up. And so then what else are you going to do but write? Um, depending on how much free cash you've got. I actually owned for a little while uh, a device called the FreeWrite, which was actually uh, essentially just like a, an internet connected typewriter that would save your writing to the cloud, but it couldn't do anything else but write. Um, and I found that to be quite useful. I ended up selling it because the e-ink screen refreshed too slowly and I would make terrible typos and I couldn't handle it. Um, but depending on what kind of writer you are, those types of tools might be useful to you. Absolutely. Um, 
on that note, the, the tricks that I've found helped me a lot, right? When I have been at my most productive, uh, it has been because of a consistent schedule um, and also uh, the tool of the local library has helped me a lot. Um, just leaving my house and going to a specific place every time that I'm going to write so that I'm kind of like I have geographic location to get into the mindset uh for writing right um and if i if i also have like a consistent schedule where like i write at this particular time uh every day then then that also in my experience helps me with that right but again that's like um that's not monetary expense right but there is a time expense there right how much time do you have um, to go to the local library or, or to spend writing every day or whatnot. Um, that's another thing that you kind of has, have to gauge. And I think that's an important thing in any conversation about pro productivity. I, for one, know that I get really down on myself sometimes because I'm like, oh, I don't write enough. You know? um, or uh, X author that I admire wrote x amount every day and so if i'm not doing at least that amount i'm not good enough as a writer um i think those kinds of comparison games aren't great right and i think um i think that even just in these first couple minutes of this video we've established that like all of us get writing done um in very different ways right but we all get it done and at the end of it i think i think that's what matters um and i think this is, I'm going to stop waxing philosophical in a second, I, I promise. Um, but I do think that part of the, the focus of productivity is maybe also figuring out what you want out of this, right? Um, out of writing and also on some level, uh, not to get too into it, out of your life, right? Um, if, if, if what drives you is the rise and grind, then rise and grind, right? But if rise and grind just give ground, uh, don't do it, you know? Um, anyway, anyone have thoughts on that particular thing now that I'm done with my soapbox? I have stepped down. I apologize. I think there's an interesting way that we're framing this entire discussion that is not necessarily detrimental, but ignores an important aspect of productivity, which is that basically all the things that we've been talking about require setup. Like it requires either in the case of Cameron's internet typewriter, like monetary investment, but a lot of the time it requires like months of setup to set up a routine for writing to make you productive. And that can be incredibly daunting to someone who wants to get into writing, but goes, will I not be able to get any writing done until I've spent the months necessary to build up that routine? And so I just wanted to quickly touch on things that are very small that can help productivity and that seem like they would just not have any effect at all. But the main one for me is actually, and you are all going to wince at this, it's actually making my documents single spaced. And I know all of you get so annoyed with me every time I accidentally submit something in single space, but really it helps my productivity so much because the sight of an absolute wall of text on the page makes me go, that is, I created that and that has substance to it. Because if I look at a double space page, it's easier to read, but it doesn't feel as if I've written as much because there's not as much that I can read before I have to scroll. So being able to type things out in single space and just see like nearly 1500 words per page, I can just go, I've gotten a lot done in what didn't feel like a lot of time. That's awesome. One of the things that I like to, to remember uh, in that same vein is that it doesn't, writing can happen whenever you want it to and um, you can broaden your perspective and your horizons as far as what is writing for you. Some of the favorite stuff I've ever produced are like five to ten line poems that nobody's ever heard and they're just on my phone, right? Because uh, I had a thought and I jotted it down and I tried to make it interesting and that's all that it is and it, it no, I, I don't imagine anybody will ever see them but me, but they're important to me and they help hone my creativity 
for when I do have an hour to sit down to work on a novel or something like that. I think too, uh, for me, it's kind of what I'm surrounding myself with uh, at the same time. Like, you know, if I'm reading or listening to an audiobook or listening to a podcast about writing, I'm then in my writer brain and thinking about writing, as opposed to if I'm watching a video about a video game or on Twitch, then I'm thinking about playing the video game, for instance. So I think also just the things you're doing when you're not writing can affect your desire to be writing um, or not. And so that's, again, sort of another little thing you can potentially be doing. I will say, uh, as, as I'll make this quick, uh, but I think Mason touched on something that's really important, which is just the reality of trying to write while also having school or a job and other commitments and how hard that is potentially. Um, but also, you know, when you hear a famous author talk about their schedule, if they're talking about their schedule they did when they were an up and coming writer, great. But if they're talking about their schedule that they're doing now that they're a full-time writer, realize they're a full-time writer and that that is not your life most likely. And so, you know, trying to take uh, what you hear maybe your favorite writer doing is their schedule with a grain of salt and, and changing it into one that fits for, you know, your lifestyle and the amount of time you actually have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, two things kind of off of that and also off of what, uh, what Cameron and Jonah have said thus far. Um, firstly, uh, off of... Um, Oh gosh, I totally forgot what I was going to say about Jeff. So I'm going to start with Cameron's and Jonah's. Um, and I'm going to kind of come back just a little bit to the soapbox. Not going to get on it. I'm just going to stand next to it. Um, but I 100% agree, right? Like you don't have to have um, a set schedule. You don't have to have a big routine. Um, and if the little like tricks get it for you right or if the if the moment of the muse gets words on the page for you and that makes you happy and that gets stuff done like that's i think that's good enough right um not even good enough i think that's great um i think it just depends on what you want right if that is your pursuit um awesome right go with the muse um, if your pursuit is to just be an absolute fact of literature um, and you have a set number of tricks or you have a schedule or something like that and that does it for you, that's awesome too, right? Um, your writing is yours and, and it's great. Um, hopefully some of these tips and tricks will help with it. And uh, yeah, Jeff, I entirely forgot what I was going to say for your thing. So I guess we'll just leave that on the side of the road to die and forgotten um, and press forward. Anyway, uh, the time is running a little bit low. Uh, does anyone have any kind of closing thoughts um, about tips, tricks, tools, or, uh, you know, seizing the day on writing? I recommend trying everything. You know, you've heard a lot of different things. Try it, try all of it, see what sticks, like throw, throw all the spaghetti you can at the wall and see what works for you. And realize that that might change over time too. At one point in your life with certain responsibility, certain things may be getting the work done. And if that stops happening, start trying other suggestions or tips or tricks like you've heard today and may hear otherwise. And, you know, always just try to find what's, what's best for you. And that's usually gonna happen uh, through experimentation and can change, like I said, over time. Absolutely. Anyone else that has anything? Okay. In that case, I'm going to bounce off of that. And I did remember the thing. I remembered it. I remember the thing. Um, to the point of what Jeff said regarding, uh, regarding finding things that help you think about writing when you're not writing, right? Um, I would say this group of people uh, that you see on your screen is that for me. Right. A lot of the time, uh, these are the people that help me remain motivated and remain committed um, and, and feel determined and excited about writing. And I'm really grateful to have a group of people that helps with that. Um, so I would recommend also like people help, 
right? Um, and, and somewhere out there, there are people that can help you too, right? Uh, so get out there, involve people uh, in your writing journey. Um, not, not all relationships that help will last super long. I'm grateful that these ones have lasted as long as they have. Uh, but I find that more often than not, reaching out is more helpful than hurtful. Um, and last but not least, um, unless I forget this. Wow, we're really just on one tonight. We're really, I'm, I'm really just firing on all cylinders, just performing at peak condition. Oh, there it is. The last thing. Uh, like Jeff said, throwing spaghetti on the wall. I never used to write unless I really felt the fire in me, right? I would never touch a keyboard unless the muse called. Um, and I thought, you know, like people that, that do the schedule thing or people that like uh, do this or do that, like they're not real writers because, because they're not going with the passion of the art, right? Um, and so for a long time, I didn't want to do that. Uh, but as soon as I tried it, I found that it works really, really well for me and puts me at my most productive. Um, so, you know, it's 2021, people. Don't knock it till you try it, you know? Um, anyway, thank you for joining us. I'm sorry for my forget and hope. I would say we all hope with all of our hearts that this has been an enjoyable and happy viewing for you. Uh, whatever the case, you know, keep going with what you're doing and we'll see you next time, blockheads.